Here we are at day four, and I'm so proud of you, really. You can see now how we take the toxic things in our lives and turn them into power. And this is why understanding your self-sabotage is so important because the world needs all of us, especially those of us on the side of freedom and justice. The world needs us to step into the fullness of our authentic power. We are exactly who was meant to be alive at this time. We are the ones we've been waiting for. And now we're shifting from toxic habits to toxic people. Here's the thing. The idea of cutting toxic people out of our lives is by no means a new concept. But there's one kind of toxic person in particular that I want to bring to your attention. And this is one who usually slips under the radar but is actually the most poisonous of all. I call this person the skeptical friend. A skeptical friend is that person who, when you share some exciting news with them, you're not sure if they're happy or if they're jealous. Or you might even sometimes hang out with them or talk to them out of obligation because you're afraid that if you don't talk to them, that they'll get mad or upset about it or something. Other signs of skeptical friends are things like they always try to play devil's advocate, shooting down your dreams and ideas, or you find yourself always walking on eggshells around them, or sometimes you need to question whether or not they're mad at you because they're acting weird for no reason. This is a skeptical friend. And I'm sure you're probably already thinking of someone. Now, here's the thing, and I want you to listen to me very, very carefully. Just because you label somebody as a skeptical friend does not mean that they're a bad person. And if the person you're thinking of is somebody that you can easily distance yourself from, then you should just immediately start to take some steps to create a little space. But if you can't, let's just say, for example, your skeptical friend is a family member. Here's my golden rule. Just limit what you share with them. Maybe your mom, for example, is skeptical when you talk to her about your love life, but she's not so skeptical about your work. Or maybe one of your coworkers is skeptical when you talk about your creative ideas, but gives great relationship advice. In those cases, you may need to just draw a little circle of protection around certain areas of your life and set a boundary. It is okay to move in silence to protect your vibe. I repeat, it is okay to move in silence to protect your vibration. I do it all the time. And it protects not just my vibration, but the energy that I am holding in my own life, my energy, and also the energy of the vision that I'm bringing into the world. There's nothing that makes your power leak more than being around toxic people. Now, I know you're already probably thinking of someone, but let's dive into our practice to see what else arises today. Go ahead and get comfortable. And then gently place your hands over your heart, one on top of the other. And when and if you feel ready, I invite you to shut your eyes. count of three, I'd like you to exhale everything out of your system through your nose. One, two, three. Exhale everything out and come to completely empty. And now to my count of four, inhale for one, two, three, four. Hold for one, two, three, four. Exhale, one, two, three, four. 
great. Remember, this is called the four count breath. Let's do it again. Inhale one, two, three, four. Hold for one, two, three, four. Exhale one, two, three, four. One more time. Inhale one, two, three, four. Hold for one, two, three, four. Exhale one, two, three, four. And now just breathe normally. Dropping into your body, dropping into this special place within you. And I want you now to call into your mind a future version of you. A future version of you who is living the life of your dreams. And trust anything that arises even if it's different than what appeared last time, and even if it's fuzzy or incomplete. And notice in this vision today, are you indoor or are you outdoor in this vision? What do you look like? What expression is on your face? What are you wearing in the vision? What colors are around you? Is there anyone there with you? What do you see? Even if it's blurry or fuzzy or incomplete. What do you smell? Do you hear anything? Do you taste anything? Do you feel a change in your emotional state? Do you feel anything from this environment on your physical body, even something that is touching you or a temperature or a sensation? And then most importantly, what's happening in this vision that indicates to you that you are indeed living the life of your dreams? Is it something new or is it expanding from the last time you did this practice? Everything is allowed. Welcome what you notice. And now as you look at this future version of you who is living the life of your dreams, I want you to ask this question. Who do I need to set better boundaries with? Who do I need to set better boundaries with? Be honest with yourself. See what arises from within. Who do I need to set better boundaries with to help me become the person that I see in my vision. Be here for a moment and notice what arises as you keep yourself asking this question 
and get the messages that you need. As we close our practice today, I'd like you to just feel into these words with me. I am allowed to change. I am allowed to change. I am allowed to change. Show me the way. I am allowed to change. I am allowed to change. I am allowed to change. change. Show me the way. You can even just repeat them with me or say it in your own rhythm. Feel it in your heart. Whisper it to yourself. Last time, feel it with me deeply. I am allowed to change. I am allowed to change. I am allowed to change. Show me the way. Go ahead and take a deep breath in. And a deep breath out. And just anchor into what you received in this practice for a moment. You are safe to grow. You are safe to change. You are safe to evolve. And you're allowed to move forward. You are allowed to move forward. Go ahead and take another deep breath in. And a deep breath out. And when you're ready, open your eyes. Here's the thing. For many of us, The skeptical people in our lives can so often be people that we love. So what I want you to know 
is just like I said a little earlier, but I need to really reiterate this. I want you to know that just because you label someone as a quote unquote skeptical friend does not mean they're a bad person. It doesn't mean that you don't love them or care about them or that you even have to cut them out of your life at all. This is less about labeling people as good or bad and more about you taking charge of your life and setting healthy boundaries with the people around you so that you can have a more elevated relationship with them and most importantly, so that you can have an elevated relationship with yourself. This is how you take your power back. Look, when you're going after your dreams and your goals and you're taking risks, it can be scary. And all it takes is one pessimistic comment from the wrong person, especially from someone that you trust who's a friend, saying, oh, well, that's not realistic. Or are you sure that's a good idea? Or is that gonna cost too much money? I'm not sure if you should do that. Those little comments, especially from someone you love, can throw you completely off track. And so now it's time to set the right boundaries, protect your power, and protect your relationship to yourself and to others. It's time. It was so great to practice with you today. This is Justin Michael Williams signing out, and I'll meet you right here in this special place in our next practice. Bye for now.